Hi, let's take a look at the rider part of the elevator simulator in great detail. The riders are these little blobs that appear and call the elevator and get on and have a destination and then go off. And let's look at their behavior. Let's find one that uh, arrives. So this one arrived. He went to a, a randomly chosen spot and he waited for an elevator. And when the doors opened, he walked to it and got on. Okay, so then getting off just involves moving to a point just inside the door um, and then moving to a point outside the door and then moving to an exit point. And the exit points are either left or right. The Z coordinate of the exit point is random. And there's a little bit of fuzz, a randomness around exactly where they move when they're inside the car waiting for the doors to open and just outside the car and then going to the uh, final place. Um, okay, what else about the riders? They have, this is new here. Um, this is the total weight of the riders on all the cars in uh, megagrams. And um, so that suggests that the riders now have a weight. Um, so they do have a height and a weight, a body mass index, um, and a kind of a diameter, a width. Um, and those are generated kind of with the idea of average human dimensions and weight in mind. Um, okay, so let's look at the code now. Um, there's a class called Rider in a file called rider.js. And as you can see from the comment, it manages an elevator rider. So there are a bunch of these objects instantiated, one for each rider, and they're managed by the dispatcher. And um, when we create a rider, we need to give it the P5JS object in our settings, which includes geometry, um, what floor the rider is supposed to start on, and what floor he is his destination. And then uh, the rider also needs to know where the cars are and what the statistics are. And these lines here copy the formal parameters into instance variables. Then we create the states, and here are the states. Arriving means that it has just been created and it is on the left or the right, and it's going to be moving toward the starting position. Waiting means it's waiting for a car. Boarding means the car has appeared and opened the doors, and now the rider is moving towards it. Riding means it's on the car while um, the car is moving. Exiting means it's leaving the car and going to the exit position, and then exited is when it's completely moved to the left or right after getting out of the car. Okay, you see we start in the arriving state. And just to shorten typing, we create this car geom, which is um, a pointer to the car geometry. And, oh, you know what? Now that we have the settings, we can simplify this, but I'll come back to that later. Then we set the body attributes. So let's go and look at that. Here's uh, down a little bit lower in the file. Set body attributes. The body is the, the body of these simulated people here. And um, I don't know that these numbers are absolutely correct. I think they're close for people in the U.S. Uh, I'm using um, metric units. So this is 1.7 meters, and this is 87 kilograms. Um, so the height gets randomly generated and constrained to be within these values. And the weight is produced in a similar way. The body mass index is calculated from a formula I found. I hope this is right. And then we compute um, the difference of this BMI from a, from a kind of like a mean BMI. So this is used to uh, fatten or shrink people uh, in the graphic representation. And then we find a, a width multiple. So you take a normal human body thickness and you multiply it by 
by one or something greater than one or something less than one, and that makes it wider or thinner. And then we compute the uh, a, a normal waist diameter. And then we to compute the width of this person, we multiply the normal waist diameter by this width multiple that comes from the um, difference from the BMI, the normal BMI. All right, so the result of that is that we set the height and weight and width of this rider. Okay, going back to where we called this from here. Now the travel direction is um, the direction that the rider is moving when it enters from the left or the right. And it's going to be a negative one or a one. So if it's a positive number, that means it's moving to the right. This is the x-coordinate of the point at which the rider enters. So if travel direction is either a negative one or one, and you say width over two, that takes you to the, the center. And then you add to that either width over two, which gets you to here, or negative width over two, which gets you to here. So the result of that is you get an x-coordinate of the left side or the right side. Now we want to choose, uh, create a vector with our position. So the vector is three-dimensional. It's got x, y, and z coordinates in it. And the x-coordinate is this enter x that we just computed above. And the y-coordinate is the y-coordinate of the floor that the rider starts on. So the starting floor here. And then the z position is uh, random floor z, which just means if I were to here um, look at the side view, here are the floors. So random floor z just gives a point within a range, I think it's 20 units either way, uh, from the center of the floor here. All right, that sets the position. Then I mentioned that once um, the rider is placed at the left or right edge, it has to move to a position where it'll wait for the car. And to find that, we first compute the x-coordinate of that position. And to find that, we take the, the enter position, which again is going to be the extreme left edge or right edge. And then we add this amount here, which is a random number. It's a, it's a Gaussian distribution, so it's, it's kind of uh, centered around this mean of a quarter of the way. So we either put the people arriving around a quarter of the way in from the left, or if they're coming from the right, a quarter of the way in from the right side. And since it's a normal distribution, most of them will be quite close to one quarter of the way in, but they'll spread around in that kind of bell curve. Um, distribution around that around that mean. Okay, so we've computed the the weight x, and now we build this arriving path, and the arriving path um, is built from this vector that's got the the weight x position. Um, and the y position of the rider and the z position of the rider. So it's going to stay where it is on z and y, but it's going to change in x. So we create this array of vectors called arriving path. And this path only has one position in it. Car in is what car we're in, and we're not in a car yet. Here's the color that's randomly chosen. This is the speed that the rider uh, walks at. So you see sometimes when you put it in the insane mode or heavy load, the car will disgorge this huge number of riders and then they'll spread out at different speeds. Um, it makes it much more interesting when they um, travel different speeds. So that's what this is. And set up destination number display. That's this number that appears above the rider. And um, in 3D mode, it takes a little bit of work to do text. And that's what that's about. So let's go and um, look at that now. Um, if you go and look up um, in the um, 
uh, P5JS um, documentation about how to do this, they'll say that you one of the ways is you create a new graphics object here, uh, and then um, do the work in it, and then you can use that as a texture for something. So we'll use this later, um, but we do um, a stroke with this color, fill with this color, choose a font, set the alignment to the to be centered. And then we draw the floor number uh, with this width and height. So we're creating um, like a little other canvas that's got the destination floor number in it. Okay, that takes us back to here. And then we increment the count of riders waiting. So when a rider is created, we add one to waiting here. Okay, that completes the constructor. So let's go on. Let's see what else we have in the file. So there's the constructor. There's create states, which is here. Uh, we looked at set body attributes. Um, let's look at draw now. How do we draw these things? This is the code for drawing. First, if the rider has exited, then we don't we don't render the writer, we don't draw the writer. Next, we, um, now most of the units for the objects that you see in the code are in almost pixel coordinates, but since it's 3D, it's not exactly pixel coordinates. I'm trying to move that into metric units, and these writers are made in metric units which means we have to scale from the metric units to the sort of pixel units. And that's what's happening here. We have in the settings now this uh, constant, which I think is 16 at the moment. So 16 pixels per meter for the drawing the rider. And this function here just does that scaling. So when we calculate the, the leg length, um, so notice that these, these are supposed to be the torsos and the legs aren't drawn, but the legs, there's room for the legs if they were to be drawn. The leg length is a third of the height. And then the height is two thirds. The body height, the torso height is two thirds of the rider's height. And then the, the width is, the, is scaled um, of the width value that we created in the constructor. This is uh, the scaled width. Now we do some pushes, pushes and pops, and inside that there, there are two parts. So the first part here is for drawing the, the body. The second part is for drawing the destination number above. So let's look at this. We have to say where this rider goes, and we do that with a translate. Um, but first, we translate to the position of the rider, and then we adjust from there. So here, we, when we draw the, this ellipsoid, that uh, it looks like an oval, but if you move around, uh, if you rotate, you see that it's just as, it's the same shape when you look at it from the side as it is from here. Uh, when we draw the ellipsoid, we specify the position of the center of it. So that's why we, we translate to, to here. So we go half the height of the body plus the leg length. That's how much we move up. And then no stroke, so there's no outline around the ellipsoid. And then we fill with the randomly generated color of the rider. And then we produce the ellipsoid that is um, width over two, height over two. And I think these are, these are kind of like uh, radiuses. Uh, I'm tempted to look it up now, but anyway, that draws the ellipsoid. Then we draw the number that appears above. Um, so since we're in this pushed body here, there's an automatic pop. So this translate undoes. This translate remains in effect. And now we need to go up a little bit. So we go the height plus the leg length plus a little margin. And then um, ultimately we texture using that um, canvas, the temporary canvas we made, and we draw a plane. 
So um, there's an invisible plane on which that number appears. Um, the scale, ha uh, because of the fact that we've adjusted the scale so that the y-axis goes up instead of down as it would by default in 3D mode of P5JS, um, the text would be drawn upside down. So we have to invert it on Y. Also, I experimented a little bit with trying to improve the quality of the, of the, uh, of the type uh, for that number. And I found that if I, if I uh, rendered it at twice the desired size and then scaled it down, uh, which we're doing here with the 0.5s, um, it looks much better. So that's the reason for that. Okay, that's draw. What do we want to see next? Uh, we could look at follow path, um, set boarding path. Let's look at update. Um, I mentioned that the riders are in one of these, one of many states. So they start in the arriving state and then they go to the waiting state and boarding and and then uh, riding and then exiting. And what do they do when they're in the arriving state? Well, they follow a path. They follow the arriving path that we set up before. And once they've moved entirely through that path, then they switch to state waiting. So we're going to have to look at follow path and see how that works. But I think maybe we'll keep going here. Um, when we're in the waiting state, then we call wait for car. If we're in the boarding state, then we do another follow path, uh, a different path this time, the boarding path. So more complicated than the arriving path. And when it finishes, we go to the riding path. And then this little business at the end is code that gets called once we reach the end of the path. Because once we've boarded, then we have one fewer riders waiting, and we have one more riders riding, one more rider riding. And then also at this point, we add the weight of this rider to the uh, total rider's weight in the statistics. Next is the riding state, and here we just call ride to handle that. And then in the exiting state, we have an exiting path. So we have three paths now, the arriving path, the boarding path, and the exiting path. And once we've followed that path to the end, then we change to the exited state. And then the rider is no longer drawn. And then later it gets removed from the array of riders. Um, okay, I think we need to look at some of these things now. So let's look at follow path. Here's follow path. Um, what does it do? It um, calls move toward, and it moves toward the first position vector in the path. And then that returns how much farther it has to go. And if that is zero, then we uh, remove the first element from the path, uh, from the path array. And then if there are none, no elements remaining, then we advance to the next state. And then if we, remember I showed the block of code that might be passed in when, uh, to be executed when the path is completely followed, that's what this does. If that was passed in, then we call it. All right, now we need to look at move toward, which is right down here. And what does it do? It makes a note of what time it is now. And then it, noted, it, count, it determines how long it's been in milliseconds since the last uh, step it took on this path. And then it updates that millis at last move to now. And then it uh, looks at the destination and the current position, and it subtracts those vectors, and that gives us a pointer to uh, where we want to go. So this is a, a three-dimensional vector with x, y, z values pointing to where we want to go. And then we take the magnitude of that vector, which gives us the distance to the destination. Then we remember when we created the riders, we 
randomly chose a kind of like a speed for them. That's this movement per millisecond. So we see how long it's been since the last step and then multiply that by the movement per milliseconds. And then uh, we use that, or if that's too far, then we use the remaining distance. And that's the magnitude of the step that we're going to take. So that's the distance. Then we multiply the pointer to destination after we normalize it. So normalize it means we make the magnitude of it one. So it still points to the, points to the destination, but it only has a magnitude of one so that we can multiply it by how far we want to go. And then we end up with the, with the vector that's exactly the movement we want to make, the displacement from the current position. So we add that displacement to the current position. And now we've moved. Finally, we subtract the current position from the desti destination, get the magnitude of that, and that's how we return the distance to the destination. So follow path is this general routine that can be used with a path, which is an array of vectors in three space that the rider is supposed to follow. Okay, let's go back to how we got there. And that was here. So that concludes the arriving state. Um, then we want to wait for the car. So let's look at somebody waiting for a car. This guy's waiting for a car. There he goes. This guy's waiting for a car. Car appears, and he goes to the next state. So um, arriving state, waiting state, wait for car. Let's look at that. Here's wait for car. Um, the Y coordinate of the floor we're on. And then we look at all the cars. We try to find a car with its doors open that is on this floor. We may or may not find one. If we do find one, then we make a note of what car that is. We tell the car to go to our destination floor. And we set the boarding path to get to that car. And we record the current time. And then we change the state to boarding. OK, what do we need to look at from here? We need to understand set boarding path. So let's go there. Set boarding path. This makes it easier to access the car's geometry. We can just refer to it with CG. So we need the car uh, width and depth um, inside the car. So we're trying to find a point inside the car that we want to move to. And you notice that the riders take on different positions inside the car. Um, we find the center of the car, and then we add this fuzz to it, which is 40% of the um, width of the car. Now, dare we go and look at fuzz real quick? Well, here it is. So this just takes a random number between 0 and 1 and maps that into minus half and plus half. So um, that means we could go as far as 40% to the left of center um, to 40% to the right of center. Um, OK, so we've talked about the first argument to the create vector. So this is the x-coordinate for the position inside the car. The y-coordinate doesn't change because the car is at the same height as the rider. Uh, but the z changes. So now we get the car center z, which is this, the z, the front to back uh, center of the car. And then we add our fuzz to that. So with the two fuzzed values from car center X and car center Z, that's what determines the position of the rider inside the car. And um, so if you notice, if you can see a car, uh, see a rider going in to a car, you'll notice he goes just outside and then he goes in. So the two elements to that path, 
he's going to go, let's watch this guy. He goes to that point outside and then immediately right in. Uh, you can't walk directly into the car. You would walk through the walls or the door. So that's why the path includes a point in front of the car. Um, and that's this, outside door pause. Now let's go there now. And this takes, for, the, for X, it's the same way of the car center X plus fuzz. The Y is the same because we're on the same floor. Um, and this part takes the car center Z plus the car geometry tree Z, the, the depth of the car. So that brings us out to in front of the car. And then we fuzz. So that finds the outside door position. Now we finish by setting the boarding path equal to a new array that consists of these two um, vectors the, that are the points on the path and outside the door and then inside the car. So that concludes looking at set boarding path. Now let's go back to where we called that. That was here. Uh, we're back in wait for car. Just to remind you, how did we get in wait for car? Well, we're looking at the waiting state. All right, so back to wait for car. And that's the set boarding path. And um, I may have explained these last two, but we make a note of the time and then we switch to the boarding state. Okay, going back now, we've talked about these two states. Um, let's look at the boarding state now. So the boarding state follows the boarding path. And when it's done, it makes these changes. I think I mentioned that already. So let's look at how the boarding path gets created. Um, that's right, we talked about the boarding path already. Okay. Hang on a second here. Wait for car. Set boarding path. That, that builds the boarding path. And then here, we use the boarding path. All right. Let's go on to riding now. Uh, here's the ride function. What does it do? We get the car that we're in, and we set our Y position. So notice that when the car moves, the riders all stay with the car. The only thing that changes about the riders as the car moves is the rider's Y position. And that's what's happening here. During the ride, this gets called for every frame of animation during the ride, we set the rider's Y position to the car's Y position. Then we need to know if we've arrived. Is, has, is the door open for the car? And are we at the floor, our destination floor? If we are, then we set exiting path. And I think I might not show you this one. The exiting path has three parts, a point just inside the door, a point just outside the door, and then the exiting place. And I think there's nothing new in looking at that. Um, we make a note of the time. We update the stats, change the state to exiting. Okay, that's ride. Uh, the last state is exiting, and that's just following the exiting path. And when you're done, change the state exited. Okay, so we've talked about the rider class that manages the riders. And um, that's a lot of detail. And um, perhaps I'll go on and talk about the details of the other parts of the system. So that's all for now. So long.